Hello comrades. Created a little after the birth of communism, exists an ideology that seems to get almost as much attention. This ideology is anarchism. The term anarchism generally describes people that advocate for justified hierarchy and justified authority. Anarchists are also not for state socialism. They want a spontaneous, non-hierarchical, and decentralized society. Before I've become a Marxist-Leninist, I first joined the left as an anarchist. However, despite being one, my knowledge of anarchism was not very deep. I decided to join an anarchist community, who recommended me a lot of texts and articles. I read all their articles, as well as The Conquest of Bradwick Kropotkin. After reading all of this, I have come to a realization that both anarchism and communism are quite similar. In the first three chapters, Kropotkin advocates for common ownership of all property with collective work. He suggests that one's man work should be for the benefit of everyone in his society, and demands that everyone should work for the benefit of humanity's well-being. A quote from the book says, No more of such vague formula as the right to work, or to reach the whole result of his labor, to which he follows with instead, a well-being for all. The rest suggests that the main violation of everyone's well-being is private property protected by the state and that the state should be destroyed so that everyone can have a part of the property. A piece of the Communist Manifesto shares similar. It says, The distinguishing feature of communism is not the abolition of property generally, but the abolition of bourgeois property. But modern bourgeois private property is the final and most complete expression of the system of producing and appropriating products. That is based on class antagonisms, on the exploitation of the many by the few. And keep in mind, bourgeois refers to the capitalists or the property owners. In this sense, the theory of the communists may be summed up in a single sentence, abolition of private property. In chapters 4 through 12 of The Conquest of Bread, Kropotkin says that there is more than enough produced to suit the needs of humanity. However, Marx has already made an analysis of capitalism and its ability to produce way more than our needs. Kropotkin finally mentions that luxuries are necessary for a quality life and that there will be plenty of quality goods made by the workers. However, Marx has already made note that working under capitalist conditions has separated the identity between the worker and the product, which in turn decreased quality. The final chapters of Conquest of Bread tell us that people will not get laziness in society since people can work on their own, and again, Marx has already had similar in the manifesto. He says, according to this, bourgeois society ought long ago to have gone to the dogs through sheer idleness for... Those of its members who work acquire nothing, and those who acquire anything do not work. The purpose of pointing out that Marx and Engels have already made statements that Kropotkin rehashes is because his ideas are not new. The main difference between anarchists and communists is the view of state socialism. So then, most anarchists want socialism, but they do not want a state. Technically, communists do not want a state either, though. Communism, in the Marxist definition, is a stateless, borderless, classless, and moneyless society. Yet almost all communists understand that before such a society can be reached, there must be a gradual transition. Many anarchist thinkers say that nature is spontaneous, and though that may be so, a dinosaur did not randomly give birth to a chicken. Instead, there are generations upon generations of slight transitions throughout evolution. A state needs evolution, and in its state is crucial to begin socialism. If you throw a fish from warm water to cold water, it will go into shock and probably die. The common worker, like the fish, is used to a state and is used to capitalism. Likewise, it is important that once a capitalist state is overthrown, that the working class should then create a state of itself. Lenin's interpretation of Marxist analysis of the state can be summarized that its state is a tool for the ruling class to oppress the majority or the lower class. A socialist state is then the rule of the working class over the bourgeoisie. Lenin writes, The proletariat needs state power, the centralized organization of force, the organization of violence both to crush the resistance of the exploitators and to lead the enormous mass of the population. In work of establishing a socialist economy, by educating the Workers' Party, 
Marxism educates the vanguard of the proletariat, which is capable of assuming power and of leading the whole people to socialism, of directing and organizing the new order, of being the teacher, the guide, the leader of all the laboring and exploited people in the task of constructing their social life without the bourgeoisie and against the bourgeoisie. Hardly any spontaneous revolutions, no matter what they advocated for, have successfully worked. They have little direction, identity, and leadership. They are good, but alone are not enough, and should only exist to help open up a vanguard party. What non-vanguard party has lasted more than a couple of years? Examples of such are the Nicaraguan Revolution and the Spanish Revolution. The state of the proletarian is a means of protecting and transitioning from foreign and internal threats of capitalism. Once the majority of the world is socialist, there will be less of a threat of counter-revolution, and in return, a less need for a state. As capitalism and the state withers away, then communism will start to take place. Anyone that does not follow this practice is not a genuine socialist, and anything that they create should not be supported. Us communists and anarchists have both arisen from our poor conditions with the hope to create a fair, better, and non-exploitative system. However, it requires a lot of maturity and commitment to understand that we are probably not going to see the end result, but we are definitely entitled to help reach it. Even in the transitions, as tough as it will be to start, our livelihood should still persist to keep getting better within them. We seek the same ends, but the differences in our means force us to separate our identities. I read the AFAC website, which contains various articles and texts on anarchism. I read one regarding on how anarchist society might look and found nothing but vague and idealistic promises, and their article concludes with, When reading this section of the fact, remember that an anarchist society will be created by the autonomous actions of the mass of the population, not by anarchists writing books about it. This means any real anarchist society will make many mistakes and develop in ways we cannot predict. This implies that this is only a series of suggestions on how things could work in an anarchist society. It is not a blueprint of any kind. All anarchists can do is present what we believe and why we think such a vision is both desirable and viable. We hope that our argument and ideas presented in this section of the fact will inspire more debate and discussion of how a free society would work. In addition, and equally as important, we hope it will help inspire the struggle that will create the society. And it ends there. I translated that to them admitting that they are vague, that the reader is probably lost, And finally, good luck as they send them on their way. Anarchists know what they want the end to be, and it really isn't that different from communism, but they have no realistic or thorough points of how to get there. What they should have is material analysis of conditions on how to get there, yet doing so now is unnecessary because we already have people that have done so. Thankful to Karl Marx, Frederick Engels, and Vladimir Lenin for giving us the knowledge to properly achieve a communist world. What we should do instead is use Marxist analysis to adjust to the various situations that arise in different places of the world. And then there are the syndicalists who want to end capitalist state by continual boycotting in unions, but that has not worked, nor shall the anarcho-pacifists who are purely against authority and violence. Unions have made life a bit more comfortable under capitalism, but have never ended it If anything, it was after a violent revolution where radical change was made in a capitalist state to hopefully please and suppress the working class. Then you have anarcho-mutualists, which is pretty much anarchists striving for market socialism or free markets, which only continues capitalism and has no planned economy. Anarcho-individualists, which seems unnecessary to categorize in, since the ideas of both communism and anarchism are still for an individual and his needs. Anarcho-capitalism, which is basically a dystopia that replaces states with corporations. Anarcho-primitivist, which are much like primitive communists without a want for industrialization or modern medicine, which is just ridiculous. And the rest, green anarchism, anarcho-feminism, queer anarchism, and anarcho-transfeminism, which are all unnecessarily focusing on single topics, when all of these topics and minorities would be resolved in a united class struggle anyway. For my sake, I must reiterate that when I say they are unnecessary, I mean that these minority rights and a better environment come with socialism and a united class struggle anyway. It is important to support these minorities, the LGBTQAI+, 
but only to invite them and integrate them into the class struggle against the bourgeoisie as their primary enemy, instead of devoting an entire ideological sect to them. Any worker that is a part of the LGBT plus is a comrade of mine, but any capitalist that is a part of the LGBT plus is an enemy. With that, hopefully, if you are an anarchist, that you can understand the importance of a vanguard party, as well as a state that will inevitably wither away as more socialist principles replace capitalist ones. We both seek the same outcome, only Marxists have already figured out and tried and true method of reaching it. Hopefully, you are willing to consider becoming a Marxist as well, and if you know any anarchists, pass this on along to them. The more that can join in the ideology, the closer we are to starting an inevitable revolution.